the next topic is presented by yes bank right coming up it is cross border trade and digital innovation in banking uh, it will be presented by two speakers mr munindra verma serves as the senior president and country head trade finance and services transaction and banking group he joined yes bank as a senior vice president and country head trade finance in 2008 prior to that he worked as an assistant vice president at royal bank of scotland and the other presenter is mr sandeep tigrewala who is the president of emerging business banking mr verma and mr tigrewala it's really been a great pleasure to be here absolutely mesmerized by the spread of participation that we have today and all the more galvanized in mr pugazenti's word truly galvanized uh, you know to hear story on his subject on uh, zinc and copper right L uh, lead and zinc and i must confess that many of the ideas which was which were shared by mr just in the just just a couple of while before absolutely new to me i must say that worldometer is the website i have not been aware of i am really looking forward to uh, go through that and probably understand all the more um, very very uh, thankful to hear so nice words about us and i agree i fully agree that we have huge opportunity to lead in many many ways as far as our future development energy requirements and the way many other issues related to common interests that we have now as i see the galaxy of speakers today and then we talk about banking the good common part about banking is that it's touching our lives it's touching the lives of businesses it's touching the life of individuals and in the world of innovation in the field of innovation to do new things a banks not necessarily one particular bank but banking industry also have to lead the way to partner to collaborate and support the innovations which are happening across the economy and also particularly in our area of interest today uh what i'll do is that i'll focus particularly on cross border aspect and certain technology innovation which are happening which are relevant to make our business far more efficient far more ahead of curve and i would also like to add that these innovations and these solutions and these ideas are not necessarily linked to corporates and industries in india but also uh, for the rest of the world because there are many opportunities there are many scenarios wherein there are requirements for interaction between india and rest of the world and banking and the solutions around that uh, so i'll talk about uh, uh, cross border financing supply chain solutions in our business commodity hedging solutions are also relevant there is important aspect of technology digital banking there would be some pointers i would like to share some thoughts with regard to that some innovations happening in that space as well and some more future developments which have not been so much you know uh, imbibed so far and there are opportunities to develop in those areas uh as far as this event is concerned we have participation from players from india and overseas and there are you know uh, suppliers there are exporters there are primary produ producers there are uh, of course uh, scrap related trading so there are solutions from the banking perspective to make your business efficient there are solutions to make your business uh, uh, you know uh, uh, there are solutions to make your business far more enabling on the import side on the export side and there are solutions around domestic trade as well one important aspect which would be relevant you know uh, to global players over here are certain regulatory framework there are enabling frameworks you know with regard to movement of goods there are enabling frameworks with regard to movement of uh, money movement of uh, exchange there are solutions around that which are coming from one of the important guidelines which which is called as foreign exchange management act fema which is uh, which is more for management of foreign exchange places foreign exchange than for controlling foreign exchange and also there are opportunities for indian corporates to go overseas uh, do investment capture uh, uh, local markets in many parts of the world at the same time there are enabling provisions for 
global corporates to come and do business in India, set up businesses in, in, in India, and also do trading with Indian players. So there are guidelines around overseas direct investments. There are guidelines around foreign direct investments. It's important for, for the corporates to understand, go through, and make the best, of, best use of that to make a very, very hassle-free uh, business process. Just to take this idea forward and a little bit more micro to, uh, to give uh, some perspective on uh, efficient financing solutions for exports, you have, uh, you have uh, opportunity to take banking finance in rupee terms, you have opportunity to take banking finance in export terms, and many times in your business, of course, you are mostly dealing in goods, but if there are requirements of dealing in services, dealing in certain technical expertise, there are opportunities, there are solutions to avail banking finance for those services uh, as well, trading of services as well. Though not so much intensively relevant over here, but I have come across that in, in uh, uh, technology industry, in goods industry as well, certain consultancy related you know, uh, services are being provided. Again, in those services, financing can be availed and cross-border payments can be made comfortably. The most important part over here for us is to make the payment and, and do the banking piece far more comfortably. Uh, I'm sure uh, we all are aware that uh, as far as overseas investment into the country is concerned, uh, the country is reasonably open as far as investment in Indian uh, industries, particularly in manufacturing, other than very, very, very select sectors, maybe defense-related technologies, there are restrictions. Otherwise, overseas corporates can comfortably invest in most of the sectors in the economy, up to 100% of their corporates. So there are enabling provisions around that, once again, bankers are required to provide, again, not only guidelines, but also take care of regulatory requirements, reportings uh, around that. Good part to highlight, and it's been, it's been discussed in the last one hour, one hour also, is that as a country, we are also getting huge amount of investment across all sectors of the economy, and that foreign direct investment in increasing significantly. And not only foreign direct investment in terms of equity investment in the Indian corporate, but also in terms of uh, lending to the Indian corporates in the form of external commercial borrowing, not only in terms of external commercial borrowing, but also in terms of transfer of technology and technology know-how. And again, there are uh, enabling provisions around that. And I must say that though, uh, in terms of guidelines, uh, it's uh, widely understood that we are quite open on capital account transactions. You no, know, there are movement of goods and services. Uh, we are fairly open on, capital, on current account transactions. There is reasonably very, very large amount of openness on the capital account transactions as well, capital account businesses, capital account movement of capital as well. For example, if, if an Indian corporate wants to go and invest overseas, there are opportunities to invest up to four times of their net worth. So that's the opportunity that is, that is available. At the same time, uh, if one wants to borrow under the external commercial borrowing regime, one corporate can comfortably, without reference to Reserve Bank of India, without any requirement of approval, which we talk about restrictions, one can invest as high as, one can borrow as, 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 as high as $750 million. The point which is relevant for all of us is that in, in our businesses also, there are lot many enablers, there are not restrictions as far as cross-border movement of capital uh, are concerned. Little bit more micro uh, for our day-to-day -day business. It's also relevant to our exports and imports. Uh, there are n number of financing solutions which are available on the upstream of a corporate, on the downstream of the corporate, and of course, as a part of the you know day-to-day uh, -day working in terms of working capital solutions, which are which are required by by the corporate. One important point I would like to highlight, as far as the global supply chain solutions are concerned. Uh, that they are with regard to, you know, exporters taking certain financing without any, without any requirement of any banking credit exposure from banking system in India. So there are, uh, there are solutions wherein you export to a credible overseas importer and once you have acceptance from the overseas importers, there are banks in India, there are global banks who, who back uh, such acceptances and based on that without any direct credit line from Indian banking system, you take financing. So this is one such financing area which has been, uh, which is being, uh, which is developing quite, quite nicely 
and I, I think there are opportunities for players in this sector as well you know, to avail financing without exposing their balance sheet to the Indian uh, banks. I would also like to highlight commodity hedging related solutions which are not so much intensively used. If you believe that, if you believe that your, uh, your business has, of course your business is having um, uh, an element of uh, commodity price risk and especially that commodity price risk crystallizes when you have your transactions uh, in, in two different currencies or the timing of your uh, payments are, are at different point in time as far as the receivables and payables are concerned. So for those again, you have opportunity not only to hedge your exposure in the domestic uh, uh, commodity exchanges, but also you have opportunity, you have freedom. Uh, and I would like to highlight a little bit about the process. You have freedom to uh, approach, freedom to hedge your exposures uh, in, the, in the global commodity exchanges. And for that, again, there are enabling provisions. Earlier, this part of the, uh, this part of the you know, a process was required to be re uh, referred to Reserve Bank of India, the central bank, and then you know, submit the necessary documents and have approval. Now, except for precious metal, uh, you have, uh, you have uh, freedom to, uh, to, uh, to hedge your exposures on global uh, commodity exchanges. Through your, uh, through your partner bank, through your authorized dealer's bank. So except gold, platinum, silver, these are the precious metal, these are certain, uh, these are little sensitive commodity in terms of the issues around and the implications, particularly gold, and except that for all other, including your non-ferrous uh, metals, you have opportunity to uh, you know, approach and hedge your exposure through, uh, through global uh, commodity exchanges. Of course, there are certain, certain uh, criteria in terms of profitability, in terms of listing requirements, and based on that, it can be under automatic route, or if it is not, and, and if your business warrants uh, commodity hedging solutions, one can definitely approach RBA through, through your AD bank. So these are certain solutions which are relevant. Uh, these are uh, provisions, these are enablers which are relevant from your financing perspective, from hedging perspective, from your cost of financing perspective, from your currency uh, risk related uh, no aspect there are lot many digital solutions which are uh, which are available which will make your business efficient which will make your uh, processes efficient which will make your processes particularly payment and banking process error free i'll just talk about some of them which may be relevant to you maybe one or two uh, these are most of them are relevant uh, relatively new ones and some of you may be using but there are some of the, the Solutions which are uh, which are being uh, talked about may not be used by you, or you may be relevant. It may be uh, you may like to know a little bit more about that. I right now I'll not talk too much at length. However, in case of need, we can get into a bilateral discussion and understand a little bit more comprehensively on that. API uh, banking, uh, this uh, program interface, active application program interface banking, is a new buzzword in the industry, and it's not only a new buzzword; it's being used by select corporates, very, very, very selectively, very, very few corporate. What we have to do over here is that in, you do business, you do your activities, you do your business processes in your own, uh, in your own uh, enterprise system, and you don't have to even come to the banks, banks, inter internet platforms or bank system. You have to continue to do your processes, you have to continue to receive payments in your own system, in your own enterprise, you know, uh, uh, void, uh, system, you have to continue to make payment from your own uh, so ERPs, whether you're using SAP or you're using Oracle uh, ERP or you're using any other uh, no, enterprise-wide uh, software. And the bank would be setting up a bridge, bank would be setting up a communication which is reasonably secure you know, uh, in terms of the tunnel, in terms of the communication between bank server and your server and ensure they ensure not only hassle-free, but absolutely accurate, seamless processing. This is something very, very, very few corporate in the, in the country are using, and this is something very, very few corporates are using worldwide. So this is something which is an opportunity, especially for large corporates, especially when the volume of your receivables, volume of your payables are, are uh, very high, it will help you make your, uh, make your uh, uh, life comfortable, it will help you cut down your cost, it will help you bring your uh, bring more accuracy to your payment processes. So there are opportunities in terms of standardization, 
there are opportunity in terms of instant banking facility, absolutely secure. But yes, there are some implementation processes as the two systems have to talk. As the two systems have to talk together, uh, there are requirements to do the setup process which takes some time depending upon how we uh, prioritize in terms of the engagement be between uh, two uh, technology departments of two, uh, two teams. These are relevant for payments, these are relevant for receipts as I just highlighted. Little micro one, there are uh, solutions especially you know, uh, trading hub in Mumbai, uh, there are many trading hubs in many parts of the country wherein you may be engaging with your banks and banks may not be located in your own vicinity. You know, it's important to add that many uh, corporates in the country are not doing online, you know, banking facility. They are not availing online banking facility. Many banks have, have not been offering online facilities. So in that case, you have, you know, you go and submit certain physical instructions, certain physical documents to your bank. For those scenarios, there are solutions which are called as reliable identity, real ID uh, solutions wherein you communicate, you, uh, it's a very small micro solutions unlike the API which I highlighted or you know, net banking facilities which, which may be offered by banks. Here there is small file which is being, a small file transfer protocol which is being put in place and two uh, organizations, the corporate and the bank communicate through this micro tunnel which is being set up only for movement of this instruction which could be which could be a form based approach it could be an it could be a scan based communication and necessary checks and control which are normally preferred by corporate you know maker and checker or double uh, double check in the processes all of them can also be made available as a part of very very micro solution which does not take so much time to implement banks for uh, for trade uh, trade related requirement for export and import related requirements as well as for many other services that one is availing from banks, uh, services, the channel is also available on the net. Uh, yes Bank also has a platform wherein one can uh, give necessary instructions for opening of letter of credit or opening of bank guarantee or do cross-border payments, particularly outward remittances through this platform. This is also a very robust platform and this also benefits corporate a lot in terms of logistics advantage, in terms of you know, uh, technological safety in terms of overall efficiency and in terms of overall business process enhancement uh, for the corporate, uh, you know, as far as the cross-border payments or cross-border transactions are concerned. There are, uh, there are benefits which I just highlighted and the most important point is that in addition to transactional experience, you have opportunity to have post-transactional, you know, comfort as well. Whether you are, you are seeking any information from the bank, you are seeking any data from the bank, all of them are readily available to you to make your business efficient and at the same time do your, do your trade far more comfortably. Some new developments have taken place uh, in the Indian uh, banking space uh, for the exporters as well as for the importers. Uh, 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 as you all know that in the international trade, the movement of goods, movement of money, however the data for the customs authority, the, the authority which manage goods, custom, and the authority and the regulator which looks after the money, which is RBI, the data was not available you know, with both of them at the same point in time. Very, very transformational development as far as the data sharing between the customs and the central bank authorities concerned, very new to our country. Export data processing management system and import data processing management system. You are going to experience transformational changes with regard to reportings which are required to be done with, with regard to the communication which flow from the trader, exporter, or importer to the customs, to the reserve bank, to the banks, so that is undergoing, that is going to, uh, going to go undergo a huge change in the next six months to one year. So that is something going to really, you know, change your, change the way you do your own uh, trade finance and your own cross-border, you know, movement of goods and money. Two, three pointers quickly. Uh, now there are opportunities uh, to, not only there are banks who are on, who are using this technology, cloud technology wherein banks as well as corporates they can avail the efficiency which are developing in the information technology world. That is something again uh, we as a bank as well as I think some other banks are also available wherein they are providing an ERP kind of software to the corporate. So that is also can be available on cloud wherein the solutions can be hosted in some common, common place not necessarily completely and 100% to be financed or to be you know, capital expenditure to be incurred by a corporate. There are a couple of other 
technology which are developing i think not so much in use but blockchain as well as uh, you know advanced analytics which are again taking good shape as far as as far as uh, you know making the solutions available to the to the corporates at lower cost at far more efficiency so these are the couple of ideas relevant you know, to share with you all in case of uh, any further requirements any further qu query or clarification we would be happy to answer thank you very much